news.com and putting in the keyword flights. Massive, massive storm. Yeah, and you know, the, we got to also mention that these winds were up to 75 miles per hour. I mean, they are hurricane force winds. Right. So, had a lot to deal with, which is why what we're here. What are you going to do? Yes. <laughs> which yes, is why absolutely. we love Las Vegas, right? With winds like that, now Miss Scott Bemis' hair like crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go right now to show us our, uh, some of the winds we got blowing outside right now. Of course, they are nowhere near what we had way up there in the northeast, okay? But we did have a breezy night tonight. Continue to be a little breezy in some spots, although it's not too windy at all. That's going to change on Monday, which we'll show you in a sec. Right now, temperatures to the North Parlor Valley. We're going to start with this, uh, mainly uh, in the mid 40s. <coughs> Excuse me, 45 for carrying Hollywood, uh, Alexander. Way out there, 45 degrees. Down in uh, Henderson, 45 as well for 215 Green Valley Parkway. College 95, double fours for you. And it's chilly up there in Lincoln County. Kelly, 31 degrees. Summer goes to Valley, 39, 45 for you in Boulder City. And uh, Laughlin at 45. Highs for the day today, not much of a warm up at all. Now, you remember a couple days ago. Let's go back to Wednesday. We were 70 degrees. Not the case today. The highs only in the mid 50s here throughout the Las Vegas Valley. 50 only for Fort Apache, Dan. Seven Hills down Henderson at 56 degrees. Same story for Flamingo Boulder Highway. 54 for Boulder City. And oh, let's pick some place else. Prim 53 for you. 49 Bullhead City and Blue Diamond. 50 even for your high. Officially the high out of McCarran today. 54 degrees. Our normal should be 61. So we went from above average to below average. 41 degrees is what we dropped to you for our overnight low. Now that system that brought us all the cold weather, the clouds, now moving off to the mid plain states. Going to bring some snow there. But let's focus on that big nor'easter that brought all that snow. There it is. This is what we saw on uh, yesterday. And this is actually changing over to snow. You can see the heaviest amounts of it. The nor'easter brings in that cold air. This changes all that moisture to heavy snow at times. And we had a three to four feet of snow in some por portions of uh, Massachusetts there, Connecticut, and also way up to uh, out in the Cape and all the way up to, to Maine. As we look back west now, the four corner states starting to clear out. That low pushing off to the mid plain states. So that means we're clearing out. But the next disturbance will bring us some breezes, which you'll start to see here by Monday. All this will light up with colors indicating strong winds by Monday. So, yeah, we've got some breezes on the way. Forecast then for tonight. Temperatures are going to be chilly. We're going to drop back down to the 30s for our overnight low. 36 degrees to be exact. Partly cloudy skies with winds a little breezy at times. So we got a bit of a wind chill expected overnight. 51 for tomorrow. Fewer clouds, mainly light winds. An evening shower is a slight possibility. Not ruling it out. But then after that, we clear things out. Breezy temperatures still stay on the chilly side. We get back to the 60s for Thursday and then the weekend. We'll also drop temperatures to the upper 50s. Just as long as those 60s come on Valentine's Day. All the, all the women got, are waiting for Valentine's exactly, Day. Exactly, right? They want those outdoor plants. So. And Ted and Scott, so happy to be joining you for the first we time. We are happy to have you. We and really are. Ted will have you know nothing can mess with this hair. You put, it, you put enough mousse in this I'm thing. I'm trying. I'm always I'm listening trying. back in the office, my friend. All right, well, we got a little sports to talk nice. about. Big night for the runner Rebs. Packed house at the Thomas and Mac. Hoping the Rebs could turn things around. Coming up, how two shooting guards help the Rebs bounce back in a big way. And other college craziness to tell you about. A half quarter leads to an upset. And speaking of five, five overtimes to decide a game. Sports is next. From 8 News Now, this is Sports with Scott Bemis. Well, after two straight losses to Boise State and Fresno State on the road, Rebel Nation in a bit of a panic about this UNLV squad that had so much preseason hype. But a chance to erase those bad memories tonight against conference-leading New Mexico. Rebels had won six of the last seven regular season meetings at the MAC between these two. 15th-ranked Lobos entering with the third-best RPI in the country. Rebs don't waste any time producing some fireworks. Anthony Bennett, hello, also had a three to open the game. Bennett nearly had a double-double in the first half. Now, with the Rebs up seven early, Bryce DeJean Jones gets involved. Hits the three from the corner. Then, the top of the key. And the corner three again. He scores 13 of the Rebels' 15 points over a seven-and-a-half-minute stretch in the first half. Rebs up 24-10. And then nearly 18,000 at the MAC. Well, they're loving things. It was electric in there tonight. Then, nearing the end of the first half, Kaden Reinhardt's turn. Yeah, he can hit the long ball as well. Been in a bit of a shooting slump, but breaking out in a big way. Finished with 16. Steve Alford's club, meantime, held only 30% shooting in the first half. They're down 14 at intermission. Now, early second half, it's Bennett. Another highlight reel jam. Good passing right here. 17 and 12 boards for him. But more than the scoring...
The Rebels' defense that was the story of this game. Bennett at three blocks. Kim Birch and Jones added two apiece. And they hold the Lobos to 4.22 from downtown. With about a minute and a half left, Bennett and Reinhardt putting the finishing touches on this one. 64-55 win for UNLV. They're 18-6 overall, 5-4 in the Mountain West. Afterward, Coach Rice on how his team rallied around each other the last few days. Everyone understands that we're in this thing together. In the last few days, I, I really felt like because of the adversity we went through, uh, that our guys grew together even more so than before. Yeah, I think we all took a new approach. and uh, We all just came out here looking to just give it our all. And uh, everybody just played. We all played as a team uh, on both ends of the floor. And uh, I think it really worked out for us. Losing isn't fun, um, especially if it's against like Boise State or Fresno State. We know it's just. Um, so we just went out there and practiced, practiced hard, listened to what the coach has to say, and banded as a team. Um, and then we came together and we got the win. All right, earlier today, Fresno State trying to back up that win over the Rebels on Wednesday by winning at San Diego State. Uh, a little more difficult. <laughs> Wouldn't happen. James Rahan with three of his 14 here. Aztecs going a 13-0 run in the second half. Then late in the ball game, Jamal Franklin puts them up 27 with the putback. He surpasses the 1,000-point mark in his career. Aztecs are 6-3 and three in the Mountain West. They win it by 22. Elsewhere in the league, Deontay Burton scores 22 as Nevada overcomes a 10-point deficit with under 6 to play, gets the home win over Air Force, and in Boise, Wyoming drops its fifth straight in conference. Broncos win it by 7. Meantime, Wild finish in the Big Ten. Under 5 seconds left between Michigan and Ohio State. Tim Hardaway Jr. gives the Wolverines a 3-point lead, but moments later, it's Ben Brust of Wisconsin. Great pass, gets it off, no way. Yep, prayer answered. Michigan actually had fouls to give. They wanted to foul on this play, but they didn't follow John Beeline's orders. It cost them. Brust would hit another huge three with less than a minute to go in OT, so Michigan has one last chance. But Trey Burke's Trey rims out. Go crazy, kids, go crazy. Badgers pull the upset 65-62. Well, a week before he's set to get back to work with Washington Nationals, Bryce Harper made a public appearance in our hometown last night. That's right, Las Vegas. He was at Finley Toyota handing out stuff. Also helped donate a big check to the Miracle League of Las Vegas. And after winning the National League Rookie of the Year this year, it begs the question, what goals does he have for year two? I've never cared about myself or anything that, you know, all my numbers and whatnot. Of course, I want to do well and succeed and, you know, do all those things. But, you know, as a team, I think we have a shot to, you know, play in the World Series and get deep into playoffs and, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, fulfill that dream of getting a World Series, you know, ring and bring that trophy back to D.C. By the way, Harper turned down an opportunity to play for the United States in next month's World Baseball Classic so he could focus on spring training, which starts in about a week. Finally, another college hoops game had me asking, did you see that? Louisville and Notre Dame, not a great game for a while, but it got real good late. Late in regulation, Jerry and Grant the drive in the foul. We're going to the first overtime. Make it we're going to the second OT when Russ Smith misses this three. Hey, make that a third overtime when Notre Dame ties it here. You know, when you go this long, it's too much for some fans to take like this little girl right here. She's going to sleep. As they go to a fifth overtime, we edit it down for time. Irish, in the end, rushed the court after winning in five overtimes, 104 to 101. Bet they could have used some overtimes during the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, they did with the blackout, right? And it extended things. <laughs> a big part of our 8 News Now family has gotten a big honor after the break. The organization honoring our very own Paula Francis. Now, Nevada's first choice for news. This is 8 News Now Weekend Edition. A big part of our 8 News Now team took home a big honor tonight. Take a look, guys. Anchor Paula Francis was yeah. recognized. Yay! At a gala put on by the Las Vegas Rotary at the Renaissance Hotel earlier today. It's also a fundraiser for the Shade Tree Shelter for Homeless and Abused Women and Children. Paula has actually been a board member for nearly 20 years now. Mm -hmm. Her co-anchor, you see there, Dave Carassier, was on hand to introduce the lucky lady. Congratulations, Paula. Well deserved there, yeah. yeah. Well no, deserved. None better than Paula Francis. No, she's great. But we want to know a little bit about you. I mean, you're brand new. You do a great job. Oh, thank you. It's just the first day. I like you already. I'm, try, I'm trying to, you know. Flattery will get you everywhere. Awesome. Just know that. Uh, I, my last per place of residence was Albuquerque, New Mexico, but I'm originally from El Paso, Texas. Nice. I have three children and so happy to be here. Lobos fan? <laughs> Of course. Rebels fan now. Rebels fan <laughs> now. There you go. Thanks for watching Welcome 8 aboard. News Now. Thank you. Uh, we'll see you anytime. Just go to 8newsnow.com. Bye-bye.